Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. We start this week with traffic here and its effect on our quality of life. Montgomery County ranked top on a national list as one of the counties with the worst gridlock in the country. To start solving that issue, the county has created a task force of public and private members dedicated to developing a plan for a rapid transit system. Lorna Virgili has the details of this new transit task force. Lorna? So said the traffic transit force has been formed and it has a mission to make sure that it is a reality rapid transit in Montgomery County. These are the members of a new transit task force launched by Executive Ike Leggett. They will be in charge of creating a blueprint for a countywide rapid transit system to reduce the gridlock in Montgomery. The gridlock is rampant and it's hurting our economy, our safety, and our overall quality of life. A lot is in motion here in Montgomery County. We've done a great deal. Montgomery County is a national leader in non-single occupant commuting, with 30% of our commuters already using transit, carpooling, walking, or biking. The Maryland Department of Transportation has designated Shaded Road, Twinbrook, Whedon as transit-oriented development, and we know what we have in store. Same thing for White Flint. They're commissioned to invest in alternative transportation that makes a difference, such as this rapid transit vehicle. But the first thing is to find funding. Is developing a funding um, stream. This, um, we've, we've got two projects in the federal hopper now, the Purple Line and the CCT. Um, but everything else on the map is not in the federal funding, and we know the feds probably aren't going to fund both of those other projects. So we need to come up with a funding mechanism that's outside of the federal process. Maybe get some federal help, but not rely on federal help. A possible public-private partnership is not off the table. Uh, we must begin now to uh, figure out how to implement this. And, uh, and in doing so, we will be prepared to implement, uh, in fact, begin to put this in place when conditions exist when we can. If we do not begin preparing now, uh, we will be caught flat-footed and uh, conditions will continue to deteriorate. The mission is to implement a system that will provide mobility, air quality, reduce energy consumption, and stimulate economic development in the county. Councilmember Nancy Navarro has introduced a resolution urging the Maryland General Assembly to adopt legislation that would grant all Maryland residents in-state tuition to Maryland colleges and universities regardless of their immigration status. The legislation would grant in-state tuition to students from Maryland tax-paying families who attend and graduate from Maryland high schools. Census figures show the foreign-born population living in Montgomery County has nearly doubled in the last 10 years. This particular bill not only certifies or clarifies that any uh, family who has a child who has graduated from a Maryland high school two years or you know and graduated qualifies for in-state tuition but it also clarifies and establishes that if a student is not a permanent resident is undocumented that that student also qualifies for in-state tuition as long as you sign an affidavit that claims that you will file for residency when you are uh, eligible within 30 days. One of the issues I think that's been confusing is that maybe some people think or are interpreting this bill as an admissions bill. It doesn't mean that you automatically qualify to be admitted to the University of Maryland. You know, the uh, requirements are where they are and they're very stringent. It just says that if a student, uh, you know, has the appropriate grades, et cetera, and the admissions office decides to admit that student, that it should qualify. County officials want to support legislation that would limit panhandling along county roads. The move would require state legislation and could affect public safety organizations that collect donations at local intersections. The issue stems from a report requested by the county executive that recommended roadside solicitation require a permit. Councilmember Phil Andrews supports a complete ban of roadside soliciting. He says it's a safety issue. 
It's simply unsafe for people to be out in the middle of the road uh, soliciting uh, uh, drivers. And so it really is a public safety issue. In Anne Arundel County, uh, the county council there acted after a person soliciting a wheelchair was killed uh, by a car. And so what we're asking our state legislators to do is to give us the option of a prohibition on roadside solicitation in addition to the option of considering a permit system. The county executive picked out one of the options that was described in the county's task force on roadway solicitation, uh, but the task force did not actually make recommendations. It listed various options, including the option of a prohibition. And so the county council wants to have the full array of options. According to the latest census data, Montgomery County's population gained almost 100,000 people or just over 11% in 10 years. Planning Director Rollin Stanley engaged the council in a dialogue this week to break down the numbers and what they mean to the way we do business here. This is a wonderful opportunity for the county, including me at the land use level, to assess what it is we do from service delivery to how we plan out uh, uh, the Burtonsville neighborhood, which we're doing now recreation, all these things. What are the impacts on health? What are the costs? What are the advantages? What does it mean culturally and socially? And I am not an expert on all those things, so what we tried today was just um, sort of like make popcorn, take the kernel and give people a whole taste, just a taste of so many things. We have to, just like in so many communities across the country, do a better job of engaging folks who represent the new face of the county. Still ahead on County Report this week, Captain Paul Starks will be here with the latest from Montgomery County Police. And how do we pay for the redevelopment of White Flint? I'm Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer. Rockets, reptiles, and Dr. Einstein will tell you about an event coming up in Rockville where you can find all that and more when County Report This Week continues. My dad is my hero. He goes into places people want to get away from. He makes everyone safe, but the best thing he can do is come home. The U.S. Fire Administration reminds you to protect yourself and firefighters. Have smoke alarms on every level and near sleeping areas. Test them monthly. Change batteries as instructed. Install sprinklers. Do your part to get out before firefighters have to come in. We can all be energy savers. It's easy. Turn off lights. Use energy saving light bulbs. And turn off electronics and appliances when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Learn more at energy.gov slash kids. Thanks for watching County Report this week. We're joined now by Captain Paul Starks from Montgomery County Police, who is here to tell us about some thefts from vehicles that are taking place up in the Germantown area. Captain, tell us about it. Well, Susan, detectives from the 5th District are investigating a series of thefts from vehicles where the victims have parked their cars outside Germantown daycare centers and had valuables removed from their unlocked vehicles. These valuables include electronics, cash, and credit cards. Do we have any pictures or description of this person or persons? We have a picture of a suspect using or attempting to use credit cards at two different locations, a Rite Aid in Gaithersburg and the Germantown Shoppers Food Warehouse. So this can be a lesson to all of us. What kind of prevention tips do you have to offer for folks who are dropping their kids off or, or other errands? Even if you're going to be gone just for a minute, always lock your vehicle. And if you do leave valuables in your car, Make sure they can't be seen by someone outside. Okay, good information. Thank you very much. Captain Paul Starks, Montgomery County Police. If you're looking for something to do in Rockville that promises family fun for free, look no further than Rockville's annual Science Day. It happens every year at the Montgomery College campus, and Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has a preview of this year's event. Bridget? That's right, Science Day is always a huge hit with kids and adults, and we had the chance to check in with Mayor Phyllis Marcuccio and organizer Bob Ekman to find out more about this event and why it's so important to keep the sciences alive in Rockville. 
And what can residents expect this year, Bob? Uh, well, you can expect the things that have been there for the past few years. We're expecting about 60 exhibitors. Um, a lot of the standard exhibitors that we've had in the past, uh, we'll have a lot of exhibitors from Montgomery College, uh, the chemistry and biology and astronomy and the IT departments. They're all getting involved here. We have the uh, uh, Rockville uh, uh, robots. We have a robotic. We have a lot of robots this year. Um, we've been involved in a lot of robotic activities in the last year or so, and, and that's bringing a lot of attention about robotics into the city. This year's free event will be held on April 10th from noon to 5 at the Montgomery College campus in Rockville. Bringing science to young people is a pretty easy sell in today's uh, world. Um, we know a lot of people talk about things that they talk about the problems that we have and the fact that we're falling behind and we're losing our scientists and our engineers. Um, the Science Consortium and the Science Center are doing something about that. The Rockville Consortium for Science hosts Science Day every year to increase science literacy in our community and emphasize the fun in science. And I'm so grateful that the city is able to help us do this along with the college and some other organizations that allow us to do this. Um, it's really good for the community and it's really good for our young people. The event has been going strong for the past 22 years and is very close to Mayor Marcuccio's heart. Come to Science Day. Don't miss it. It's a wonderful event. It's lots of fun. And don't worry if it rains, we're still going to have it. County officials are banking on the redevelopment of White Flint to play a critical role in the economic future of Montgomery County. However, the project is one of the priciest in recent memory. It's expected to cost more than $800 million to develop. To address that issue, the county executive and planning officials came up with a plan to help finance this grand boulevard. The sector plan calls for transforming this auto-oriented strip of Rockville Pike into an urban center of residences and businesses where people walk to work, shops, and transit. To jumpstart the development, the county council has approved a planning board recommended financing plan that would set up a special tax district for property owners. The special tax district applies to all property owners, not just the um, developers per se, but all property owners within the White Flint sector plan area, except existing residential, which would mean existing condominiums and existing apartment buildings. Everything else is subject to it. Any property that redevelops and um, with condominiums or with uh, apartment buildings would be subject to the tax. Um, those transportation improvements include a number of very expensive projects, the most significant of which is turning Rockville Pike from a series of successful but aging strip centers into a more walkable urban boulevard. However, some of the other expensive projects include creating what we call a workaround for Rockville Pike, um, and that is a place for the traffic to go while the improvements to Rockville Pike are being done. Um, and that's going to include some fairly significant changes to the intersection around Old Georgetown Road and Executive Boulevard just to the west side of Rockville Pike. The special tax is expected to generate more than $200 million to help pay for White Flint's renovation. Over the next 40 years, new development and tax revenue within the special district are estimated to bring in as much as $7 billion to Montgomery County. Beginning next year, property owners will pay an extra 10 cents per $100 of assessed value. Beginning on July 1st, 2011, it will be part of the property tax assessments that will be received by the county um, for all properties within the sector plan area. It has the capability of generating a lot of revenues over the period of 40 years. You've probably heard, you know, whether it's $6 billion, $7 billion, whatever the amount would be, approximately $6 billion of revenues over 40 years. However, it also costs a lot to do. Both Sesker and Schwartz-Jones say the White Flint plan has been an evolving effort between developers, the community, planners, and county officials. They say everyone recognized that the cost of adding new infrastructure to the White Flint area, especially improvements to Rockville Pike and the surrounding road network, would be more expensive than typical developer contributions could finance. The special tax, they say, was the best solution. It was something that the, this planning department hadn't done previously, um, and certainly it was a sort of collaboration that hadn't occurred between the planning department and the executive branch and the council. If this is going to happen, we had to come up with a dedicated revenue source that could help to make it happen, and that's where the special tax district comes on. Developers are ready to get their shovels digging on this project, as there are three proposals waiting in the wings for planning board consideration. 
When the sketch plans are approved, the projects will undergo preliminary and site plan review by staff and the board. Construction could begin as early as next year. Still to come on County Report this week, some tips for folks who want to keep their skill set sharp. And Kathy Stanhope will be here with our Pet of the Week. We'll be right back. Hey, there's T-Rex, the active dinosaur who finds fun things to do with Montgomery County's Recreation Department. Getting involved in the county's recreational activities is easy. Just register like T-Rex. So get the guide and register by mail, online, or in person at one of the county's community centers. Hey, wait, where in the county is T-Rex going next? I'm starving. What's for breakfast? Guten Tag! Johannes Rums! I bring you arts-enriched raisin brums, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem-solving skills. It's good! And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the arts! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Welcome back to County Report. If you've been thinking about changing careers, starting to plan for your retirement, or if you'd just like to keep your mind active by learning something new, then Montgomery College offers a program that can help you do all of these things and much more. It's called the Lifelong Learning Institute, and MCTV student reporter Sophia Reeves recently had a chance to sit down with Ann Evans, the program's director. Here's what she found out. Let's start with an overview and description of the Lifelong Learning Institute at Montgomery College. Our mission is to really provide intellectually stimulating opportunities for people 50 and over. And we do that through a variety of course offerings, lectures, all kinds of programs along those lines. Let's talk about the general areas that classes are offered in. We have a broad array of subject matters and topics that we offer courses and lectures in. We have quite a few art courses, painting, art history classes, literature, history, we even have some archaeology and anthropology, personal finance classes. Can you talk about some of the specific areas offered in the area of personal finance? As people near retirement, this is obviously a huge concern. We, we have some very successful um, classes, uh, successful or strategies for successful retirement. Those are very well attended. We have classes dealing with wills and estates and all kinds of topics along those lines. Have you had students who enroll in classes with the Lifelong Learning Institute because they're exploring and thinking of a second career? I think we're getting those more and more, certainly in this economic uh, environment. Is there a danger for retirees who retire with nothing to do? Um, how can the Lifelong Learning Institute help someone like this? New retirees say, oh, no, 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 I've got plenty of things on my plate. I know exactly what I'm going to do with my time. And very often, a year or two after they've initially retired, they do find that there is a void and there's some other things that they would like to do. And the nice thing about the Lifelong Learning Institute is that we really do try to cater to that age category. If an adult is interested in the Lifelong Learning Institute but has questions about it, who should they contact? Oh, they should definitely contact me. <laughs> and I'm happy to give my phone number, 240-567-1828. Now it's time for Tom Pogue with this week's transportation update. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update from Montgomery County. On President's Day, Governor Martin O'Malley and U.S. Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood joined local officials to celebrate the completion of the first segment of the Inner County Connector. Officially designated as Maryland 200, the project is the state's first all-electronic toll road. 
at last open to traffic. The ICC has been planned since the 1950s. This first segment connects I-370 in Gaithersburg to Georgia Avenue in Olney. A temporary ramp beyond Georgia lets eastbound motorists take Norbeck Road to Maryland 198 to I-95 for points north, such as BWI Airport or Baltimore. The rest of the highway is projected to open by the end of 2011. Using EasyPass transponders in motorist vehicles and overhead gantries, the technology allows tolling at highway speeds, eliminating toll plazas. For this first six-mile segment, the toll will be $1.45 during weekday peak hours, $1.15 off-peak, and $0.60 cents overnight. To learn more about the ICC, go to the Maryland Transportation Authority's website at mdta.maryland.gov. We're working to keep you moving. It's time for our Pet of the Week segment. Here's Kathy Stanhope with a cat named Baldwin who is looking for a new home. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope at the Montgomery County Humane Society with your Pet of the Week, and I am here with Baldwin. Baldwin is an unaltered male, a domestic brown short hair, or medium hair as you can see. I actually think he's got some Maine Coon Cat in him. He looks a lot like he's at least half Maine Coon Cat. He's got tufts of hair coming out of his ears and he's got big old feet. There's definitely some mane in him. He feels just like a Maine Coon Cat too. Nice, long, silky hair. And he's a nice guy. He likes other dogs. He likes other cats. He likes people. He's very, very affectionate. He just loves to sit on laps. He's just a sweet, sweet guy. And he's really looking for a home. He was found as a stray. And as I said, he's an unaltered male, so he will need to be fixed but I just want to take this time to tell you how important it is to get your cats and dogs spayed or neutered. There are so many animals in the shelter and we really have trouble placing them all and spaying and neutering really helps avoid situations like Baldwin here looking for a home. So please definitely get your cat and dog spayed and neutered. It's the best thing you can do to help the animal population. But in the meantime, why don't you come down and meet Baldwin here at the Montgomery County Humane Society in Rockville or visit us on the web at mchumane.org or give us a call at 240-773-5967 and come on down and meet Baldwin. Look at that face. He is just gorgeous. Look at that absolutely beautiful face. He wants to go home with you, so come meet him. You might go home with your new very best friend. Coming up next on County Report this week, jazz lovers from all across the country come to Rockville to celebrate their music and exposing your kids to the simple pleasures of gardening. Keep it here on County Report This Week. Laura says we should start worrying about drinking at these things. They're only 12. I know. I'm just glad you know better, sweetheart. You're too smart for that, right, honey? Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Mark! Anna! Hey! Hey! We got your lunch. Hey! You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back. The second annual Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival held at the Rockville Hilton kicked off with three full days of swinging and all that jazz. Our friends at Montgomery Community Media have this report. The second annual Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival held at Rockville Hilton Hotel kicked off with three full days with swinging and all that jazz. Produced by the Jazz Academy of Music, the Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival presents the region's finest talents while making a commitment to jazz education by hosting an annual jazz camp for aspiring high school jazz musicians. The atrium and the halls of the Rockville Hilton were filled with jazz lovers and vendors from across the country. Also present was 2011 Grammy Award winner, saxophonist, and recording artist, Kirk Whalem. You know, my, my dad was a preacher, and I grew up 
you know, just looking at my dad. And, and to this day, you know, I've, I've always felt like that was where I wanted to be too. You mm. know, I wanted to be doing what he was doing. And he was the kind of person and he had such a rapport with people uh, on and off the pulpit. He just, he, he was, he befriended them in such a way where he, he made, he lifted them up. Mm. And um, that's, I guess, you know, hopefully what I'm doing with my music. For me, I, I, I'm not quite the sort of, um, um, everyday smooth jazz, whatever, you know, perform, I, I'm just really not, and, and I've had to accept that, you know, but I feel like uh, what I, who I am is the person who can get up there and make you feel like we're all just at my house having a good time. The festival did indeed live up to its theme this year, standing up for real jazz. <laughs> FutureLink provides self-advocacy education, youth coaches, and other academic and career supports to young adults in Montgomery County who are 16 to 25 years old. Our friends at Montgomery College have more on this program. FutureLink, Inc. This program administers the NET program, which provides youth coaches self-advocacy education, vocational and career support to assist vulnerable yet motivated young adults to successfully transition into adulthood. FutureLink is a nonprofit dedicated to the creation and implementation of a reproducible model for offering community support to young adults. The seminars that are held are nationally recognized classes that enable youth to begin taking responsibility for their future. It's unique about FutureLink that just in short 11 weeks of meeting one day a week with the students, I really saw the transformation of them from the beginning. The group that I have at the end, they were totally different in attitude and hope and philosophy and um, personality than they were at the end. Just to see with each week they became more confident and more focused on their goals was an incredible experience. So when I think about FutureLinks and the power that it has in just the short time that we have them under us with the strength of the curriculum and the strength of the information interviews and how the community comes together to help um, get these kids um, on their feet is very, very unique than any other um, organization that I've been a part of and I'm to be part of this transformation for them. In this week's Brookside Gardens Clips and Tips, we find out about some good gardening projects for kids who like to get their hands dirty. Hello, I'm Ellen Hartramp, a horticultural manager at Brookside Gardens, and today we're in the children's classroom to show you some fun and easy ways to get involved with children's gardening. Here I have a seed packet that you can buy, a kit of a window box and seed starters uh, by the Disney Corporation, or you can do it inexpensively in a leftover salad container and start your own seeds in there. Another thing children love is starting tulip bulbs indoors. You simply fill the pot halfway with soil, place the bulbs right next to each other, and fill it with soil. After you've placed the tulips, simply cover them up, put them outdoors for a cold period of eight to ten weeks, bring them indoors, and you'll have beautiful blooming bulbs. Another thing children love is houseplants. What could be more fun than potting up a houseplant in a pot you've painted yourself? Kids love succulents. They have thick fleshy leaves with beautiful coloration. Some are fuzzy, some are rounded like jelly beans. They don't need a lot of care and kids love them. And if you'd like more information about gardening with children, consider taking some of our classes. Check out brooksidegardens.org and our experience guide to programs and events. Well, that does it for County Report this week. Tune in again next week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching. Sign up for Montgomery College Alert today. Receive college closing, delay, and emergency information via text message and email. The service also sends important information about Montgomery County weather and traffic events.
The Maryland Workforce Corporation has awarded MC $20,000 from an Annie E. Casey Foundation grant to develop Maryland Integrated Basic Education and Skills Training Programs, an accelerated approach to training and workplace preparation for English language learners. Four MC Rockville basketball players have been named to the All-Maryland JUCO team. Enos Watley, a forward on the men's squad, was named to the first team, as was guard Alexandra Silva from the women's team. And Portia Davis and Yasmeen Harris, both from the women's squad, made the second team. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website.